As always, Ted, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the week? Heavy biased pick here for winner of the week. It's Oklahoma golf fans uh, going out to Southern Hills. Tiger Woods looking good, feeling better, feeling stronger. I, I'm telling you, Gabe, something, something good is going to happen. I can feel it, okay? I can feel it with Tiger. It's going to be hot. Tiger's better whenever it's hot. Keeps that body loose. This is going to be something big. It's going to be awesome out there. I I think the conditions. You, do you hear him talk about the course? Uh, in his presser, he he was talking about like there there's more variety now for shots. And this, it sounds like he likes how the thing is lining up for him. That's what it sounded like to me. Yeah, it's not just hit it three fifty and wedge it in there. There's there's more shot making out there, and I think you know as as he gets older that type of uh, styles probably does benefit him way more. He he's an iron player. And I think that's going to be the strength of his, his game moving forward. So when the course is set up like that, I, yeah. And he feels good. He feels strong. He's moving. Well, everyone that's following him around says he looks totally different than the masters. The masters was, you know, just because the time of year was cooler. Um, this, I think this is setting up nicely. I I'm with you. The, the only, I guess the only negative, and I hope I'm not stealing your loser. The only negative for golf fans going there is that $18 Michelob Ooh. ultra. What are we doing, man? Right. Oh, okay. Be, before, before you get too angry, it is, it's a 25 ounce Michelob ultra, right? So it's like a, which is a, I mean, straight up tall boy. So it's really like a $9 beer, which still not great, but does that change your stance knowing that it's a tall boy at all? No, not at all. Does it change my stance at all? Um, it actually makes it worse, but you were nodding. Yes. I know. I, here's the thing. It's actually. Okay, enjoy the first 10 ounces of your $18 beer cold and, you know, the final 15 ounces of it uh, starting at lukewarm and ending in hot uh, in the 92-degree heat and then come back and stand in a line for, you know, 30 more minutes to get another beer. There's other things to be upset about. Number one, I'm not going to be there and I'm not going to have to pay the $18 beer, okay? Um, I feel bad for the people serving it because everyone's going to be pissed and you know, it's probably not going to work out well in the tip jar. You know, that's just kind of, kind of how everything goes. But um, I guess there's other things in life to be upset about. If you get a, a really nice show out there and I think it is going to be a great tournament. Well then I guess maybe it's worth it, but it just does feel like someone's like gouging you for no reason. It really I, does. Uh, I'm with you, and we are going. We're going Saturday and Sunday, and uh, my wife, one of her family businesses, uh, did a sponsorship thing. I've been told I can't call it a tent. I've been instructed that the people at Southern Hills would like for us to refer to it as a chalet, <laughs> <laughs> which, which oh. I. Yes. I don't I don't know what that word means and I absolutely refuse to refer to it as that <laughs> but I when she told me that dude I was like what does that even mean That is hilarious Oh uh, but if, I, if think, it, I think I think there's going to be alcohol tent, they could only serve they could only uh charge $12 but since they're chalets it's going to be 18 I I don't know. I, I assume there's going to like, it's going to be stocked with alcohol. Cause I don't think this thing was cheap. Right. And I think they're going to have like some clients and stuff like that. So I, I don't know. I'm just going where I'm told, but yeah, even I saw those beer prices and I was just like, come on, man. Like that's not the Oklahoma way of doing it's things. Not. Go real cheap and let's all get real lubed up and have a time. Go cheap. Uh, have everyone talking about how great it was, not how expensive it was. Uh, if I was a younger man and I was a real renegade, I'd find a way to sneak in 
like a thousand cold beers and just start giving them away to everyone. <laughs> Pocket shots, Ted. Pocket, <laughs> Pocket shots. shots. All right. Who do you have as your loser of the week? I had to go with Nathan Ivaldi. Um, I've, I've been going heavy baseball recently. I did the Cincinnati Reds, who threw a no hitter and lost. We've got another historic performance uh, from the Red Sox. Only the third player ever to allow five home runs in a single inning. Uh, <laughs> what a performance. Uh, I feel bad for the guy. You never know what's going to happen. Um, the other thing is it's the Astros. So maybe they got onto his signals a little bit somehow, which is you, what you think they might have figured something out. <laughs> Did you like see they... his line? Uh, 1.2 innings pitched, eight hits, nine runs, <laughs> six earned runs, five home runs, zero strikeouts. So what, what is that? That's got to be like a, a ERA of like 80. So something. you, you said maybe they figured out the signals, but also here's this pitch chart. I think that's a problem when you're just stroking it right down the middle, uh, right above the belt consistently to the Astros hitters. Let's start painting the edges a little bit more. Let's yeah. Let's work the back, the, the black a little bit. Shall we, Nathan? Uh, it's, it's like he, um, they may want to check him for color blindness. When they were showing him the heat map for some of these hitters, I think he had his spots mixed up a little bit. The The ultimate troll by one of those Astros hitters would be like, hey, I think I'm going to do the home run derby, and could Valdi, could he be the guy that, <laughs> Call him that, in. Thro that throws to me? Hey, I know we've only uh, briefly met before, but what are you doing All-Star Weekend? Uh, you got any? You got anything going on? You free? You got some free time? You don't have a trip planned, do you? You should save your money. I'll send you an Astros uniform, and you, you can you just deal it up for me in the home run derby. No, nope, I thought that was uh, unfortunate, but uh, notable nonetheless. Look at you, football guys talking baseball. That's what we do. Apparently, that's, uh, that's what happens whenever you've got a kid playing baseball these days. I guess you start to. Uh, are you becoming in. like a big baseball guy because your son or no reluctant? I, I definitely enjoy it more now because it kind of brought me back into it. I played whenever I was younger and, you know, now I'm, I'm playing catch, throwing a baseball, you know, three, four times a week now. So yeah, it, it does. It does get that fired up a little bit more. Okay. All right, let's get to my winner and loser. But first, First Fidelity Bank is a full-service financial institution based in Oklahoma with tailored solutions for all your personal and business needs, checking accounts, saving accounts, home loans, and much more. They do it all. Whether it's online banking from your computer or mobile banking from your phone, everything is stress-free with FFB. Making mobile deposits, paying bills online, and moving money to different accounts could not be easier First Fidelity Bank provides free ATMs worldwide, making banking convenient wherever you are. They also give back to the community. FFB donates a total of more than $500,000 to local charities and educational foundations. Make your life easier and go bank with First Fidelity Bank. Visit ffb.com for more information. And if you are a whiskey or bourbon drinker, stop what you're doing, head to your favorite liquor store and buy some Balcones products. You got to grab some of Balcones Lineage Single Malt Whiskey. It was just voted one of the top 20 whiskeys in the world by Whiskey Advocate, and you'll be shocked by how affordable it is. Also, you got to snag some of Balcones Baby Blue Corn Whiskey. It's made from blue corn. That's the fancy corn. And that is why it has won more than 25 awards. Last but certainly not least, you got to buy some of Balcones Pot Still Bourbon. It's big flavors make it the perfect bourbon to drink year-round. Remember, in 2012, Balcones Single Malt won the best-in-glass competition, beating brands like Johnny Walker and McAllen, and became the first American distillery to win that competition. This stuff is the real deal, people. If you love great whiskey and bourbon at a great price, the Balcones products are the only way to go. The whiskey may be made in Texas, but the owners, yeah, they're from Oklahoma. To find a liquor store that has it, visit Balcones Distilling. Dot com. 
All right, for my win of the week, thought about going with Steph Curry. And I know the Western Conference Finals, they have not, they have not started yet as of this recording, but 13 years after leaving Davidson College, Steph Curry graduates. Pretty cool. I like when the guys go back and get their degree, but I don't think it's a coincidence that he did it because Davidson only retires the numbers of players that have graduated. So Steph Curry, by far the most famous per- person ever from Davidson, doesn't have his number retired yet because he hasn't graduated. I love that. And they're like, nope, you got to get your degree. And he went and got it. That's awesome. Did you see uh, Jerome Bettis graduate steps? Yeah, that was pretty cool. He was like, yeah, yeah. very cool. Nice to uh, nice to go back and get that done. Um, I wonder if Steph Curry actually got it done or if he made a sizable donation uh, to Davidson's basketball program or something. Either way, I'm fine. Doesn't with matter. It. Doesn't he's matter. Got, he's got the degree. Also thought about going with the XFL. This is a pretty big deal. I thought it was announced yeah. all of its regular season games and playoff games will air on either ESPN, ABC, or FX. Those are all way, those are all under the Disney umbrella. Disney must love the rock, man. Yeah. I was wondering about that. Um, he's done a bunch of, uh, was Jumanji uh, Disney? Yeah. That's what I'm wondering is, is some of the, it had to be, yeah. I'm guessing. And that's, that's, Part of, you know, having the rock there is he can leverage some of that, and that works out well for him. I agree with you. It looks like a a really good deal. And, you know, I'll just go back to what I said before about the XFL. I thought it was entertaining, and I was enjoying it whenever that first season was rolling along. I know it's difficult financially to make those those leagues work, but I I think they're doing a good job with it right now. Yeah, but my winner of the week, the Oklahoma City Thunder. The basketball gods have smiled upon us, Ted. They Pretty have, good. They have smiled upon us. Thunder got the twelfth or got the twelfth pick, but also got the second pick. They were slotted for the fourth, but they got the second in the NBA draft lottery. Nick Collison did not look thrilled when they got the twelfth pick, but. He was one smirking son of a bitch when they got number two, baby. It was it was really fun to watch. The drama was awesome. That commercial break was brutal. Oh, but it will it will be the Thunder's first top four pick since 2009 when, of course, they selected James Harden. And now the debate begins. Who who do they get it to? Right and. Orlando, how about Orlando finally getting the number one overall pick? But I I would like to go on record. I am a Jabari Smith guy. I am a Paulo Bencaro guy. I I just don't know about Chet Holmgren. I know everyone says it'll be perfect in OKC system. I get it, and it feels very Sam Presti. Now, maybe he goes number one overall to Orlando because – he checks a lot of boxes that Orlando has really liked traditionally in the past, but I really hope we get Jabari Smith. Come on. Come on. I, I honestly don't know. Um, now, I've said guys that are as skinny as Holmgren is aren't going to turn out in the NBA, and it's, it's been a disaster for me. So I'm not even saying anything about him. Very skilled guy. Very skilled, could do a lot. A um, little hunched over for me. A little yeah, hunched to that back. I I think I like uh, Bancaro, but... I like I like Bancaro and Smith a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like Bancaro is just... Maybe has more NBA type of tools, but what do I know? I, you know, I... No way of gauging it. I have yeah. no idea. For... I'm for going Paolo, to trust also, the process. Uh, also for Palo, like I like him ever, ever since Brundle mis- <laughs> mistook <laughs> him for Patrick Mahomes at the Formula One race in Miami. The way he handled that, that was hilarious. And he did, he was great, but you got the shooting and the defense with Jabari Smith. You got the playmaking, the ball handling at, you know, with, with a big frame with Paolo and Chet, maybe he's the highest ceiling guy out of all these guys, but if the Thunder end up with any of the three, I mean, I'm going to be 
I'm going to be happy. But also, you got guys, you know, talking Shaden Sharp, even though he didn't play a collegiate game. Uh, Keegan Murray is being mentioned as a, a guy that's in the mix there in the top five. So we think we know what Sam Presti's going to do, right? It'll probably be if Chet goes one, you're taking Smith or you're taking uh, Buncaro. But who knows, man? You know, I mean, you really never know with Presti. Trade back, take some more assets. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. But at a couple of things were Damian Lillard looked so pissed when Portland got second. And I thought, I thought Demonis Sabonis' reaction was hilarious. Uh, Detroit getting the fifth pick, that was, that was pretty brutal for them, but kind of funny. But I, the Pelicans also, and I know what they, they ended up with the eighth pick. They had that Lakers pick. Man, I'm telling you, if Zion can get right, Brandon Ingram and some of the pieces they've got, if you get a guy that can contribute with that eighth pick, Pelicans could be interesting, but I'm just so happy that the Thunder moved up two spots instead of like falling two spots. That would have right. been that would have been brutal. And I know the last time that happened, we got Josh Giddy. It's worked out, but it was really nice to to feel like we got a win. To be, we've suffered the last two years. It it felt like the basketball gods were like, "Here you go, Thunder fans. You you guys have earned this for what you've had to watch." Yeah. I'm excited about it. Um, yeah, it, it's, gosh, it, it, it's the first opportunity I feel like the Thunder have had in maybe since, I may be missing someone, but maybe since Steven Adams that they've drafted someone that I know who the hell they are. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, every other draft has been someone from overseas or far enough back to where it's like, you know, I, okay, I'll trust it. I don't know who this guy is, but okay, we'll see how it works out. This is the first time in a long time that you've got some real names going into it that you know you're pulling from, which yeah. is awesome. It's, it's way more exciting. <laughs> it's way <laughs> it more is. exciting. I'm so excited. All right, for my loser of the week, man. Thought about going with Tariq Cohen. I, I don't know if you saw the video, but just brutal, dude. Uh, tore his knee up last year for the Bears. Bears released him a few months ago. Was doing a workout, streaming it live on Instagram Live, going going over some hurdles, going forward. Was backpedaling, plants. Bam! I didn't see that. Oh, he was Achilles. doing it live. Yeah, on Instagram. Just so brutal. And you could see he did the classic turn around and look like who kicked like me. Someone kicked him. Yep. It was, and he knew it was, and it looked bad. Like it was, it was brutal. Oh man. Yeah. That is, did he run over and grab the phone and turn it off? No, he like just, he ended. let like he knew immediately. You could tell it like you could, you can even see it on his face when it like hits him. Like, Oh no. I bet it, it was it opposite leg. I, I do not know the answer to that. It looked like his right Achilles, if I remember correctly. But, huh. yeah, it was just seeing the reaction. It, was, it wasn't like a gruesome watch, but it was just you felt for the guy. You know what I mean? Oh, that sucks. Wow. Yeah. But my loser of the week, I'm going to go with the Boston Celtics, man. And, and I know they were coming off a really hard-fought, physical, emotional seven-game series with Milwaukee. Right. And they were coming in only a couple of days between that game seven and game one there in Miami. So you figured, hey, man, they're probably going to lose game one. But then no Al Horford, COVID protocol. And we really don't know when he's going to be back. Right. No Marcus Smart. He's got a foot sprain. Uh, he's a big, powerful guy. I, I don't like when NBA players' feet. Yeah, are bothering them, and but all that being said, they came out and they looked really solid in the first half in Game One against Miami, and they're I think they were up as many as thirteen, took an eight point lead into the half, but Miami bullied them in the third quarter. 
I mean, they just turned up the defensive intensity. And it was like, I mean, it looked like Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum couldn't dribble there for a little bit. And Miami outscored them 39-14 in the third. And I'll say it, man. Jimmy Butler, I, he thinks he's the best player in the league. <laughs> he does. And maybe that's all that matters. Because I'm sure he was... You know, the stuff you and I were saying about Jason Tatum, like, okay, where does he stack up now in the league? Like, is he a top five guy? Is he a top three guy? Like, who are you taking before you take Tatum? And Jimmy Butler's hearing that going, man, I'm better than him. I'm better than him. And after watching game one, it's kind of argue against that point because, dude, he's that dude. I mean, he had 17 points in that third quarter. He was all over the place defensively. He, he ended up with 41 on 19 shots. He shot two threes in the game, missed them both. Got to the free throw line with 17 of 18 from the free throw line. And it wasn't like cheap getting to the line. Like it was, they were all pretty legitimate foul calls. Like it, it was just him being aggressive and forcing the issue and getting calls. And I, I don't know, man, but Jimmy Butler, like my opinion of him, and I know they went to the finals back in the bubble year, but like my opinion of him has changed dramatically over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. I, and I don't know, this is, this could be a bad take, but a couple of things. Number one, I feel like the Miami heat are way closer, way closer to, to how Boston plays than Milwaukee was. I, I view Milwaukee as a more finesse team where the Celtics are more of a bruising type of team, and that matchup is good for them. But whenever you you go up against someone that plays that same way, I feel like it's a little more difficult of a, of a matchup. Could be wrong on that. And the other thing is it felt like one of those games where, and you'll see this in the playoffs, sometimes if a team wins like, say they win the first two games at home, well, the first game they go on the road is almost like uh, we're playing with house money. And if you're up at the end of the third, okay, because the fourth quarter is brutal. That's whenever, that's whenever the physical discomfort comes in. You're tired. Uh, you're beat up. It's like, where are we at the end of the third? Are we in it? Yes. All right, let's fight for it. No. Okay, you guys can have this one. We're coming back to battle in the next game. I will give Boston credit. They made it a little interesting, not that interesting, but a little interesting there in, late in the fourth, cut it to like eight or nine. But yeah, as far as the, now they need to get Horford back. I thought they really missed Marcus smart and, yeah. and what he, he brings defensively. Uh, he, he allows them to be so versatile defensively and how they switch things. But and maybe he's the guy that he, I feel like him and Jimmy Butler have the exact same mindset, right? Where like, they think they're the best players on the planet. Yeah. And I, I do want to see a, a couple of uh, matchups in key fourth quarters between, you know, some one-on-one -on -one stuff between those two guys. That'll be fun. But Tatum, he was really good in the first half. And then the second half was just really underwhelming. Turned the ball over a bunch, had like six turnovers in that third quarter, had seven on the game. That was, that was surprising. Um, they really pressured him. I thought PJ Tucker coming back at back out there after the ankle kind of set the tone for the heat, that heat culture, man. But tough, man. it, it all goes back to Jimmy Butler for me. Like he's, I, he, he's not Michael Jordan. I'm not, I, I am not saying that, but like attitude wise, he's starting to give me some Jordan vibes where it's like <laughs> the guys on his team are like, Hey, we got Jimmy. Like he, he, he's going to take care of like, he just, I mean, you could tell the confidence, man. And, and they had all kinds of he other guys on step both up. Ends of the court too. That's yeah. That's rare. Yeah. He is. I mean, he's impressive. He's really, really impressive.